Hey guys, welcome to The Strong Young Man. Today I'm going to go over a concept that will ensure you maintain a good level of emotional stability over the long term. Essentially, it revolves around keeping the most important elements of your life in a well-regulated balance so that none of these elements dominate your time, your intellectual energy, your physical energy, and your emotional energy. If you invest too heavily in one element, you are investing too much happiness in one area of your life. If you achieve success in this area, it will bring you extreme happiness, but if you experience a setback, it will cause you a deep sorrow. This potential for emotional polarity means that you're exposed to a larger disruption to your well-being if you experience setbacks in your life. The extreme highs and lows that you open yourself up to by having a 100% investment into one area is risky and is not a good way to ensure emotional stability long term. At times in your life, you will need to invest heavily in a project for a short time, concentrating your energy to meet a milestone, but this should never be your solution long term. Investing too heavily in one element of your life can cripple you if that element were to be taken away from you. Long term, your best strategy to a stable form of happiness is to identify several key areas of your life that bring you the most happiness and invest that happiness into each of these elements somewhat equally. In essence, you aren't investing all your happiness eggs into one basket. You are splitting it up five ways to hedge your bets. It doesn't have to be limited to five, but it should be at least five to ensure sufficient division of your happiness. I'm going to call these elements happiness balloons to illustrate my point. Your happiness balloons should vary in category in order to keep them fully segregated to minimize the impact that the deflation of one happiness balloon has on the deflation of another happiness balloon. Your happiness balloons should also utilize different forms of energy, your intellectual energy, your creative energy, your emotional energy, and your physical energy. I'm going to indulge in my inner narcissist and use myself as an example to illustrate my point. At this stage of my life, I have seven happiness balloons. My full-time job, physical health and fitness, this YouTube channel, family and friends, cars, reading and self-development, and Aussie rules football. If I experience a deflation in one happiness balloon, I can use my spare time to redirect my energy into other happiness balloons that bring me satisfaction. I temporarily inflate another happiness balloon until I have fixed the deflation in the other happiness balloon. For example, when my Aussie Rules football team lost the grand final, it left that happiness balloon deflated. I completely ignored the news and went on a fitness bender for one week. I set new personal records, which brought me enough happiness to offset the sorrow caused by the loss. I used the pent-up aggression and channeled it into my gym sessions. As you can see, my happiness balloons vary in interest and are spread across multiple categories. This part is key to making this strategy work. Understand that at any time, one of these happiness balloons could pop in an instant. If they become too big, losing one happiness balloon will leave you devastated. This could happen with anything. Even if you think it's impossible, there is always a way in which a happiness balloon can pop. COVID-19 is a firm reminder of this. For example, my physical health and fitness balloon could pop in an instant due to another COVID-19 lockdown or an injury that leaves me unable to exercise. I could be made redundant, losing my full-time job, or the company that I work for could go under. This YouTube channel could be taken down, or politically correct authoritarians could storm down my headquarters. Family and friends, for whatever reason, could turn against you. Or worse, you could lose your entire family in an instant due to a car crash. I could crash either of my cars myself, or they could be stolen or blown away in a storm. I may become deaf or blind, unable to read or listen to audiobooks. And finally, my Aussie Rules football team goes on sabbatical after the AFL season ends in September. I need to stress the importance of having a variety of happiness balloons. If you are physically active and all your happiness balloons consist of gym, AFL, soccer, cricket, and friends associated with those sporting clubs, then all of your happiness balloons can pop in an instant if you get injured because all of your happiness balloons are tied to sports. If you are this person, you need to give your body a rest and cultivate meaning in your life away from sports if you want long-term emotional stability. Another benefit to taking this approach is that you can invest your physical energy into sport and when you tire, you can achieve satisfaction in another area, investing into a happiness balloon that calls upon a different form of energy. Similarly, if your happiness balloons consisted of you only using your intellectual energy, you could find yourself burnt out if you overdo it. Taking a break with a happiness balloon employing physical or emotional energy to bring you satisfaction in another area is the perfect way to achieve a good balance. It will also enable you to go back to your intellectual endeavor recharged with more energy. When one of these happiness balloons does pop, you should increase each of the other happiness balloons to accommodate the missing space. 
For example, if you have five happiness balloons, each holding 20% of your happiness and one pops, the remaining four happiness balloons should absorb the loss and increase to 25% until you are able to rebuild the popped happiness balloon or make a new one entirely. This is hardly a shock to the system. Some of you have probably done this unknowingly. When you lose an intimate relationship, you invest that extra time into multiple hobbies or take up a new hobby entirely. If you were joined at the hip to your woman and invested all your happiness into the state of the relationship, you are faced with a big problem after a breakup. If this happiness balloon represented more than 50% of your happiness and it disappears, it will leave you with a massive void to fill. Losing half of your happiness balloons in one instant will leave you grieving the loss. And it will be more of a shock to you if you need to fill the remaining four happiness balloons with that 50%, especially when the remaining four only made up 50% prior to. This is not forthcoming of a stable happiness curve. The problem with the COVID-19 lockdowns is that it took out so many happiness balloons for everyone at one instant. For some, it took out their entire life. It destroyed them. It reduced them to nothing. For me, the lockdowns popped my health and fitness balloon, my friends and family balloon, and my Aussie rules football balloon. Rather than being completely lost, I was able to utilize my method to redirect my energy into other happiness balloons in whatever way I could find. I elected to take my car off the road and rebuild and replace a lot of the 20 year old worn parts. I was still able to work. I was able to read over 200 books in 2020. And I made a new happiness balloon, this YouTube channel, which I put a lot of my creative energy into developing. This was able to bring me satisfaction during the difficult periods of the lockdowns and tie me over until the deflated happiness balloons could be reinflated. Don't get me wrong, I struggled throughout this period. I think everyone in Melbourne did too. It was no picnic. But if you use this concept, you will have mechanisms in place that mitigate the chance of future trauma that may come from having the meaningful aspects of your life taken away from you. If you aren't balanced in your happiness balloons, consciously shift your focus into bringing meaning into other areas of your life. It doesn't have to be a perfect split by time, nor by happiness, as long as one part does not become too focused. Beware that as one balloon does become larger, you increase your vulnerability to things outside your control. Happiness balloons may come and go as you move through various stages of your life. My happiness balloons change naturally throughout the year as the AFL season comes to an end in September. The other happiness balloons increase in size to fill the void left by this disappearing. This is a normal part of life. As mentioned previously, there will be times where you need to apply a concentrated focus into one happiness balloon. Studying for exams is a prime example. In order to achieve success, you must invest heavily into this domain for a short period of time. Understand that this form of life balance should not be an excuse to neglect your long-term goals. Your long-term goals are a part of your overall happiness and must be invested in as such. The happiness balloons of your life should fluctuate in size throughout times that require such fluctuation, but should not remain dominant on a consistent basis over a long period of time. If your personal goals require periods of concentrated focus, like studying for exams, then concentrate your energy on studying. But then after your final exam, you should invest in other activities until classes resume. This is how this strategy is epitomized. Thanks for watching today's episode. In episode 26, I'll go through my morning routine, which you can use to get a jump start on your day. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when it drops. Catch you then.